The Spiritual Narcissist and the Soulmate Trap. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa and in this video, I'm going to address how the narcissist uses your spirituality and the term soulmate to keep you stuck in the cycle of abuse. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button. This alerts you each time I upload a new video and it helps this channel and our community to grow. The religious or spiritual narcissist is, in my opinion, one of the most deceptive, hard to detect narcissists there are. These narcissists will tend to be covert, seemingly vulnerable. They will, depending on the narcissist, portray themselves as Christians or some other faith. Or they will represent themselves as spiritual people seeking enlightenment. They may even try to convince you of their superior knowledge in the spiritual and metaphysical world. They have a story or stories of some event or events that open their eyes to some greater truth or knowledge. They love the term soulmate or twin flame and will use these terms to hook you and keep you hooked. We all want to believe that there's that one special person who is our soulmate the person we were destined to meet, the one we are to spend the rest of our lives with. Now, I'm not debating the concept of soulmates or twin flames. However, I have heard and experienced these terms being used quite frequently in narcissistic relationships. The spiritual narcissist is going to fall in love with you very quickly or pretend to fall in love with you very quickly, they're going to tell you they love you within a matter of days or weeks. Now, this isn't much different from any narcissist love bombing a new target. The spiritual narcissist, however, is going to target people that hold their spirituality as a high priority in their life. So if you attend church regularly, you know, you're involved with church activities, hold a position of power in your church or your spiritual organization, Perhaps you're some kind of a healer. You do Reiki or some form of energy healing. You may hold prayer circles. All these things lets the narcissist know that your spiritual life and your spiritual growth is very important to you. And they use this knowledge to suck you in. Now, all narcissists need narcissistic supply in order to survive. The more desperate they are for this supply, the more aggressively they will pursue you especially if they've lost their primary source of supply or they've devalued their primary source and are looking for a new one. Just know narcissists never leave any relationship until and unless they secure a new source of supply, period. Now, if their primary supply leaves them, especially if the narcissist didn't see it coming and therefore doesn't have someone waiting in the wings to take your place, they will desperately and frantically search for a replacement. Even though they fail miserably at all of their relationships and never see their partners as equal, they greatly fear being alone. So for the spiritual narcissist, religious and spiritual communities are prime hunting grounds. They are able there to find someone who will have the qualities they seek, kindness, compassion, empathy, and definitely someone who will feel sorry for them and will want to save them. Now, this is why empaths are magnets for narcissists. So how do they hook you? They mirror all of the best parts of you. They study you and mimic you. They love everything you love. They have the same hobbies you have. They share the same opinions and viewpoints as you. They are chameleons and become everything you ever wanted. These are the narcissists that tell you that you are their soulmate, that they've been waiting for you their entire life, that the reason their prior relationships all failed was because they had not yet found you. You will have likely met them fresh out of a marriage or some other relationship, and they're going to tell you that their previous marriages or relationships ended for karmic reasons, all to bring the two of you together. They're going to use terms like destiny, fate, and synchronicities. 
They will claim to have loved you in past lives. My ex narc uses that one all the time. The problem with the soulmate trap is that when you believe someone is your soulmate, you're going to put up with more crap from them than you normally would with someone else. You will excuse their behavior to yourself and others, believing this relationship is the one. Now, you've likely read about twin flames, and this relationship is often described as intense, an emotional roller coaster where two people came together to heal all of their past wounding. Therefore, it's only natural to have these emotional upheavals. It's all part of the twin flame dynamic. You'll think other people just can't grasp or truly understand your special connection. And trust, the narcissist will absolutely try to get you to believe this. It's part of the way they isolate you from others. The intensity of highs and lows in the relationship is what creates the trauma bond. You will keep hoping that these things will calm down, that the drama will lessen, and that one day you two will live a life of pure bliss with one another. This is never going to happen. Instead, the high points will become lesser and the low points will become greater. There will be shorter periods of feeling good in the relationship and longer periods, periods of feeling unhappy, insecure, and unsatisfied. Lower peaks and deeper valleys. You're going to spend the majority of the relationship desperately trying to get back to the good times when the narcissist seemed perfect. This is never going to happen because you didn't fall in love with a genuine, authentic person. You fell in love with an illusion of who you believe this person was. Now, once the love bombing stage ends, and it will sooner than you think, usually within weeks or months, the devaluation process begins and you will never get back to the way it was when you first met them. Know this, anyone professing undying love for you very early on is a huge red flag that you shouldn't ignore. It's a trap that unfortunately most of us learn the hard way. But the sooner you recognize this trap, the sooner you can leave the relationship and its toxicity. So tell me in the comments, did you encounter a spiritual narcissist claiming to be your soulmate? What happened? Share your thoughts, share your questions. Remember, your experience may just help someone else. Thank you so much for listening and have a blessed day, survivors.